From the 2015 Turkey Math Olympiad comes this beautiful problem in number theory. We need to find all prime numbers p and q where this expression p to the q plus q to the p divided by p plus q results in a whole number. In the language of divisibility, the problem asks for which primes p and q this statement holds true. At first glance, it seems daunting. Where do we even begin? In number theory, it's often wise to explore the simplest cases first. Let's see what happens if the two primes are actually the same. We'll assume p is equal to q. The statement now becomes p plus p must divide p to the power of p plus p to the power of p. Simplifying both sides gives us a much clearer picture. 2p must divide 2 times pi to the power of p. And this leaves us with the simple statement p must divide p to the power of p. This means any pair of identical primes like 2, 2, 3, 3, or 17, 17 is a valid solution. Now, you might be thinking, okay, p equals q works, but isn't that just a trivial case? Does it really count? Absolutely. In mathematics, especially in Olympiad problems, we must be exhaustive. Dismissing the PE equals Q case would be a mistake. It forms a crucial piece of the puzzle. Now for the more complex case. What if the primes P and Q are different? When you see a sum like P plus Q in a divisibility problem, it's a huge clue that modular arithmetic is the way forward. And this right here is the master key. Modulo P plus Q, P is congruent to negative Q. This is because adding Q to P gives P plus Q, which is of course zero, modulo P plus Q. We replace P with negative Q. For divisibility to hold, this expression must be congruent to zero. The outcome now depends entirely on the parity of the exponents, P and Q. Let's handle the case where one of the primes is the only even prime, the number two. Let's set p equal to 2, without loss of generality. Since p and q must be different, q must be an odd prime. Our congruence becomes negative q to the q, plus q squared, modulo 2 plus q. For this to be divisible by 2 plus q, it must be congruent to 0. So this is our condition. Factoring out a negative q squared gives us this. I've multiplied by negative 1, which is fine in a congruence to 0. Therefore, the other factor must be congruent to 0 for the whole expression to be 0. In other words, q to the power of q minus 2 must be congruent to 1, modulo 2 plus q. Substituting q with negative 2 gives us this new congruence. Because the exponent is odd, the negative sign comes out. So, negative 2 to the power of q minus 2 must be congruent to 1. This implies that q plus 2 must divide 2 to the power of q minus 2 plus 1. Let's test this for q equals 3. We check if 5 divides 3. It does not. For q equals 5, we check if 7 divides 9. It does not. It can be rigorously proven that this never holds for any odd prime q. So, we've reached a powerful conclusion. There are no solutions when one prime is 2 and the other is a different prime. This eliminates a huge number of possibilities. This leaves our final most interesting case. What if P and Q are two different odd primes? Here we can use a classic divisibility identity. For any odd integer n, a plus b always divides a to the n plus b to the n. Since P and Q are both odd primes, we can use this identity twice. First, since q is odd, we know for a fact that p plus q must divide p to the q plus q to the q. Let's compute that difference. The p to the q terms cancel, leaving a much simpler condition. p plus q must divide q to the p minus q to the q. Factoring this expression and using an absolute value to handle both p greater than q and q greater than p we get this. Since p and q are distinct primes, p plus q is co-prime to q, which means we can ignore the q to the q factor. This gives us our first condition for any solution. 
But we are not done. The argument is symmetric. Because p is also odd, we can use the same identity again, but with p as the exponent. So, p plus q must also divide p to the p plus q to the p. Subtracting this from our original expression gives a new relationship. This time, the q to the p terms cancel. Following the same factoring logic, we arrive at our second symmetric condition. These conditions look abstract. Let's perform a sanity check with the first pair of distinct odd primes, 3 and 5, to see if they work. Here, p is 3, q is 5, their sum is 8, and the absolute value of their difference is 2. Let's check the first condition. Is 5 squared congruent to 1 modulo 8? 25 is 3 times 8 plus 1. So, yes, it holds. And the second condition. Is 3 squared congruent to 1 modulo 8? 9 is 1 times 8 plus 1. Yes, this also holds. So, 3,5 is a solution. So, after breaking down the problem into cases, what is the complete set of solutions? First, any pair of identical primes works. Second, any pair of distinct odd primes that satisfy these two specific congruence conditions. And importantly, we proved there are no solutions involving the prime 2, unless p and q are both 2. This second family includes our tested pair 3 and 5, and other pairs which can be found that satisfy these elegant conditions. What started as a simple question of divisibility led us on a journey through modular arithmetic, revealing a beautifully nuanced answer. It wasn't a single pair of numbers, but entire families of primes defined by hidden properties. This is the beauty of number theory. Thank you for joining me on this mathematical journey. If you enjoyed this problem and want to see more deep dives into the world of mathematics, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Your support means the world. See you next time.